Hello investor and trader, welcome back to another live day trading recap. So today I did make some trade. First of all, the overall market today, all three index, the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the SPY, all red. And today I went long, I didn't short today. I don't really short stocks by the way, I mean I just maybe once in a while I short. But anyways, the whole point I'm trying to say is even the Dow is down, the whole market is down. That doesn't mean you have to go short, you still can go long. But those long are pretty short lived. <laughs> so they know a lot of bull traps. So you have to be very aware of that. And also depending on your trading strategy and stuff like that. As for me, I love to catch falling knife. Regardless I make money or I lose money, most of the time I make money, right? But sometimes I lose. But the point of nailing the entry and nailing the exit is very satisfying for me that hey, I, I you know it's kinda like hey, you beat Wall Street, you know what I mean? You catch this knife. So when the market's open, I will, I was watching MRNA. Notice we're tank 8%. So when a stock tank this much in one, you know, in the first 30 minutes or the first couple minutes, you know the whole entire day, most likely it will be red. So the wise idea is to short. But, you know, I need to practice my short, to be honest with you guys, I need to practice that. But I wasn't looking for a short, I was looking for a long entry. Unfortunately, it already bounced before, um, that happened. You notice here, I, I went back to the daily, I went back to intraday. Like I said, when I day trade, I look at the daily also. I don't look, just look at the intraday and what it's doing because I want to see where the key level support at and stuff like that. So obviously, it's really broke the 20 day EMA. So I'm like, okay, how low do you think it can go, right? Unfortunately, it bounced and I missed the trade. Right there, that's the bounce. So from here to here, that's like five bucks. That's a big bounce, by the way. <laughs> so I know, I, okay, I, I missed it. I'm not going to chase it. So that's like 30, 20 minutes into trading already. Still has not made a movie. I'm just sitting and waiting. This is why I like to do this recap. Because uh, can you imagine sitting here with me and watching this? You probably like, when the hell is this guy going to make a move? Yeah, I trade in the five minute, by the way. So I trade very slow. So that's why I like to do this recap. So then I watch this. And like, nope, missed the bounce. So finally, finally around 7.30, based on my notes, I traded Amazon. So let me fast forward to the time. Oh, nope, that's Roku. We're going to talk about Roku in a little bit. So Amazon, where's Amazon at? Come on, come on, come on. There we go. So Amazon's falling. Can I pause the video? I want to talk about how I cashed this knife because this is pretty cool. So... The stock is falling, right? I mean, it's only down 2%, but in terms of the dollar-wise, it's down pretty big, 76 bucks. So I was watching this, uh, you can't see, but on my other screen, I was watching Amazon also, just to see how low this thing can go. And I like it when the stock keeps falling, especially the more red on the five minute, these are five minute chart, the more red consecutive, the better, because I know the bounce is just around the corner. So you notice here, this is known as a bull trap, right? Or oh, three bar play, when you call it, red, little green, and can, short right here down to the downside this right here short is for me is very risky because the rsi stochastic is really super low i know the so your your shorting right here is not that you know the risk to reward is not worth it so right here at around 7 30 a new candle and i noticed here it start forming a, a little pin bar so let me play the footage and I, i'm about to enter pretty soon Okay, I enter a market order. I should have used limit because <laughs> I got in a pretty bad price. But as long as I, under, un, as long as I, un, I enter under 220, that's good. I mean, you know, I don't want to say three, two, that's, that's a big ass number. 3,220, let's just say 220. So I enter around 219. So this, the funny part was I was waiting for this to go to, to my original price is 240. Okay, that's my original target. The funny part was, as time goes on, right, I already have my sell order ready. Remember, I don't use hotkeys. I, I type, I manually type out my order. So I, ha I type it out, ready to go. All I got to do is press sell or press the button, or enter or whatever. And right here, I accidentally click sell. I want to move my sell window to another screen so I can see the stock, another stock I was watching. But I tap a little too hard and I, I accidentally exit the position by accident. So that was a bummer. I'm like, oh no. 
So that was up 400. Uh, again, my original target was up here. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to trade this stock one more time. So that was an accident, exit. Now you might say, oh, well, let's just save right here. Oh, yeah, I guess it's true. But still, I didn't mean to get out right there. So I decided to re-enter it again the second time. So the second time I entered is around 8.05. So it was like around right here. So let me play the footage. So I like this candlestick formation right here. Again, my, my target is still around 240. So I like this candlestick formation. Uh, the stock is kind of going sideways for now, but the RSI is kind of sloping up a little bit. Sarcastic, on, now this is a five minute by the way. It's slowly sloping up. So I'm like, okay, maybe it can go a little bit higher. I, I still, I don't know why I still look at 240. So I decided to enter here around, I should have used limit, but I use market. I try to get in around, you know, below uh, 27, 26, 28. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. I enter market order and they gave me the shittiest price ever. You can see right here pretty soon because, um, come on. Yeah, I, yeah, see, boom, entered. So they gave me a shitty price, almost like 230. I'm like, what the heck? Look at the price ask bit right here. I should have used limit, <laughs> but it's okay. And then Amazon, uh, just hold on a little bit. My price target is almost there. Do, 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 do. Nope, not yet. They hit my target, I didn't want to sell. Okay, let me go a little bit more. Have my order ready, limit order. Now this time I, I got, I wise up a little bit. No, just kidding. Cause you know, the spread is pretty wide. I decided to enter, I use the limit instead of market. There you go, filled. Okay, so this right here was what? $400 trade. This right here was 500, so $900 total-ish. And you might ask, uh, how come it has no P&L? That because I am still holding 50 shares of Amazon for a longer swing trade. That's why I you see no P&L. That's how Fidelity works. If you buy a stock, I don't know, 50 share of this thing at let's say 3,500 worst case, right? I didn't, by the way, my, my average cost is not 3,500, but just an example. Let's say you buy one 50 shares. First first entry, 50 share at 3,500. Now you, you wanna buy it again at 3,200 for instance, at 50 shares, right? Now you have 100 shares. Of course, that's average cost down, right? And then you decide to sell, okay, I'm gonna sell at 3,300. Right, this is it goes to 33. So you sell your 50 shares from here from 232 to, to 33. That's a hundred dollar share, right? You have 50, that's 5k. It's not going to show 5k profit here. What it, what it's going to show is on your broker statement the, the stock you're holding, your average cost is, is no longer 3500, it is 3400. If that makes any sense, it's called a wash sale. That's just how it works for Fidelity platform. I know it is kind of confusing at first, but that's just how it is. That is why you did see you, you see no PL right here. Again, because I I currently holding 50 shares of Amazon in this account right here. Okay, now that's out of the way. All right, let's just talk about another st stock that have that I've been watching for the for the past couple of days. Let's go to Wix. Again, I watch Wix very closely every single day because they had a big sell off after the earnings, right? But guess look, look what happened to Wix. As I mentioned before, I still have not decided by Wix yet. Notice here. Every single high, every single gap down, right? It, it just create a lower high, a lower high, a lower high, lower low, lower low. What does that mean? That means it's, it's still, it's still going down. I, I'm pretty sure the volume has decreased already. Let me put the volume in. I normally do not use the volume uh, indicator because I don't, I don't need it. It's nice to have it, but I don't need it. I think, yeah. See, I, I knew it. It's, it's decreasing. So I'm waiting for that reversal signal like a pin bar, a bullish pin, something like this. Like I said, I'm looking for this candle, something like this, or at least a doji or something, a small doji, it could be this small doji, something that tells me, okay, buyer are stepping in or, or, or a big green candle, a golfing candle, something like that for a reversal signal. So far, it has not shows that yet. So nope, I'm not buying Wix yet, but I'm watching it very, very closely every single day. Another one is TTCF, Tattoo Chef. I think I made this video uh, a couple of days ago for investing and trading. So let's just go to the trading aspect because I know I'm not gonna invest in this company. It just doesn't fit my criteria. Now I'm not saying this company is a bad company or even a good company. There's no such thing as a good company or a bad company when it comes to trading, right? When a stock goes down, just short it. When a stock goes up, just chase it. No, just kidding. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so here is create a, a lower high and a lower low. So what does that tell you? I, I, like I said on my last video, right? I know this is still continuing the downside. I mean, just just think, think just think about it logically, okay? Logically, this is a full red candle. There's like no no wicks. See these wicks right here at the bottom? These are wicks. See how it pushed up? It created this line right here. That's called a wick. But look right here. There's, there's no wick. It's just a solid red. That means sellers are still selling. So I w so today is red. I won't be surprised. And look at this too. The stochastic is still sloping down. So therefore, there's no bounce yet. How low it will go? I don't know. The stock can go as low as it wants. But we can zoom out and estimate, right? Support right here around 16, the whole dollar. That's the next support I'm thinking. And then maybe after that, this one right here, you can draw a line and see yourself. Or right here, after it breaks all of that, you got to go zoom more out, right? And see how low this thing can go. Maybe back, maybe 12, 13, 10, I don't know. It can go as low as it wants. Just like it can go as high as it wants. So at the moment, we just have to be very patient and wait every single day until the sell-off finish. Wait for the reversal signal plus a confirmation. There's a difference between a confirmation and a reversal signal. I hope you guys know that because they are not the same thing. Sometimes it can you review a reversal signal, but a false signal. It's called you know a, a, call a fake out or a fake out. Yeah, a fake, like a fake breakout or a fake whatever you want to call it. It's a fake. We need a, we need a confirmation. Okay, another stock that I would like to talk about is Roku. Now, one of the guys commented in my video about how do you, you know, I, I think I said something about 241 or 245. Let me pull it up real quick. I said watch that entry or watch that price because based on what I see, that's where the stock could head to. It's not like, you know, it's never a guarantee in this game, but something you have to watch out for. So I said watch around 241. Okay, the reason I said that because you watch here, it's getting near the resistance or support right here, you see. Roku has been punishing for the past two weeks already. That's very good. I like to see stuff like this because when the stock falls off like this, you know the bounce right here. See, it's going to bounce. See how red, 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 and it's only bounce? We just have to wait for the reversal. Now right here is a fake out, you see. A big green candle, but look, it didn't create a high. It created a higher, 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 and higher low. But look, we need a confirmation. Okay, let me draw the difference between a confirmation and um, a reversal signal. So that way, it could be like I said, that's, there's a difference, okay? So let's just pretend. Uh, where is the box? Nope, I'm looking for a box. What the heck? I'm not looking for this. View, no, home, brush, image. What the heck? Where's the box? Ah, let me close this. Sorry. <laughs> let me open another window. So let's go to our paint tools to draw. The confirmation is up like that. What the heck, dude? Where's where is the box? I'm looking for a box shapes. What the heck? That's weird. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So I don't want to waste time. Okay, so the candle's falling, right? It go, it falls like this, right? It doesn't fall. It doesn't just form, you know, it has to bounce up and down and suddenly it close like right here. Okay. And then another candle, I don't know, maybe like right here, a smaller one, perhaps slowing down, right? Less volume. And then you probably see something like this. Okay. And then you might see something like this. No, let's make this yeah, red. No, uh, yeah, red, green. This, this color doesn't really matter what color it is, to be honest. I mean, if you have enough screen time, I mean, look at the stock move, like trading. You just recognize it. It's pretty cool. So it does something like that, like, like a doji, right? Now, the next candle is very important. The next candle, what I'm looking for is a higher high and a higher low, right? It, so something like this when it's when it, when it's finished. Now this right here could be any time frame. It could be five minute, one minute, one day, two day, ten day. It doesn't matter. 
what matters is candlestick formation. That's why I keep saying candlestick formation over and over and over in my videos. So this high is higher than this high. This low is higher than this low, right? It looks, it looks like it's doing this, isn't it? But this right here could be a reversal signal. However, we need a confirmation. What I mean by that is another one, another candle. So it could be like this, too close. Like that, perhaps. So this right here, can I draw a line? Oops. I don't want to draw a shape, I want to draw a line. Okay, so this right here, that's a confirmation, okay? That's a confirmation candle. Can I draw another one? This right here. Reversal signal. So, can, so the stock is falling. We're looking for a reversal signal. This is one of the reversal signal. You could call this a pin bar or a doji, or a dragonfly, what you want to call it. It's just a name. So it's like a cross. The longer this wick, the better. I mean, buyer, first of all, is selling, 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 selling. And then buyer buying, 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 pushing it up, close it like this. The next kind of what I'm looking for particularly is a higher high and a higher low. Prefer a higher high. Sometimes this could be a low. It would be the same low too. Sometime, but not always. So that's why this is known as a confirmation one. Now, where do you enter? Ideally, okay, again, ideally is, I need, I need to draw another line. You want to enter, depending on the stock, okay, the, the term of the, the cents, the price. There. If this is a $100 stock, I prefer 10 cents. If this is a $200 stock, I prefer a quarter. If this is a $300 stock, I prefer a quarter or 30 cents, so on and so on. If this under a $10, I prefer 10 cents or 5 cents. As long as this, you enter here much higher than here. Now that's very important because, let me go back, back. Oh man, no, 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 can I go back? Now that's important because, here, I want to clear up this, um, can I erase? Yeah, I like a noob to this. Okay, the reason why that is important because of this right here. To avoid this. See what I mean? Oh man, these are different kind of formation, but you get the idea, right? This is known as a bull trap. That's the whole idea of buying it up here to avoid this right here. Now you may say, well, I have, now you might argue that because I have this, when I say it to my friend, they're like, what the heck, dude? Now, you may argue that, they, no, let's say this right here. Right? Now, you may argue, well, I buy it better right here because a better entry, better price than up here. That is true. But but, I, but this, the thing about trading, is, is guys, it's all about probability. Do it 100 times. Do it 5,000 trades of this setup. And you tell me what is the rate of doing like this to catch the to catch the reversal. You see what I'm trying to say? You guys see what I'm trying to say here? Trading is all about probability. We don't know. There's no there's no guarantee. The reason why, for me, okay, for me personally, I like to buy at a higher high because I want to save my butt from going down. You know, like the like bull traps. Now you may ask, what the heck are bull traps? Well, it looks like this. There's plenty of it today. Uh, let's see if I can find some. I think mRNA is one of them. So yes, the market is still open. That's why I see the price fluctuating. Bull traps. Those are very dangerous when it comes to the market is going down and you're going long. This is a bull trap right here, right? 
buyer stepping in. Let's say you didn't know your buyer here, think you're higher high. Next, let's see. And then the stock goes down. Let me zoom in right here. See that that candle over here? Red, 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 big green candle, right? And then suddenly look at this candle. Is this a higher high? Yes, it is, right? Now, remember I said this right here is like is a reversal signal. There's a confirmation. And then look at this. This is the third candle, right? This is where you should enter. Remember? See the third candle? Let me draw another one. Now again, this is all my from my experience. Okay, you can do whatever you like. I'm just sharing you guys my experience and how I can win more than I lose. Why I want to follow my um, my rules? See this right here? Fall, fall, fall. Reversal signal. Bullish pin. A bullish engulfing candle, by the way. Higher high and higher low, right? This high, you see the high right here, the H, the high is 50 cents, the low is 48, right? So it bounced up a little bit, right? It's a $300 stock, by the way. And lower low, it looks good, right? It looks good. Like, let's say we, let's see, like, right, right here. Let's say during the instant moment, it looks good. And if I have my order, what's the high right here? See the high? The high is 65,650. If I have my order at 65.75, for instance, my order would not get triggered because I buy up here, you see? I would save myself all this headache. You see what I mean? That is why I like to buy a higher high, if that makes sense. That's, I, that's the ideal formation. Of course, there are some outliers and, you know, some other cases where you can enter, you know, the one that I just showed you right here, where you can enter down here. Now, that's for more experience, but you want to make sure just follow this formation and you cannot go wrong. So where do you sell? Ideally, watch this previous high right here. So once it start, let me draw this back. So once it start going back reversal, watch this previous high right here because that's gonna act as a uh, resistance right here. So this gonna, sorry about that. I need to draw a line, not a, not a box or a square. So this right here is gonna be a resistance. This right here is gonna be a resistance. So, you know, so on and so on, you know. On top of that, you also have moving averages, right? Because like right here, see I, these averages right here? I always have two up, 20 EMA and 6 EMA. These two I always, always have up because these are my guidelines for me, okay? You can change this number if you like. For me, I like 20 and 6. Sometimes I use 5 too. It just depends. And, it, and it's all the same in a way. So you have these resistance right here and you have this moving average right here. So keep that in mind. That's where your, sell, that's where your target is going to be. Now you may ask, where do, you, where do you have a stop loss? Well, I, ideally, again, ideally, your stop loss should be down here. Maybe like, depending on the stock price, 5 or 10 cents below this low. Or sometimes 50 cents. Because sometimes, if you notice, let's say right here, right? The stock, I hate when this happens sometimes. So let's say right here. Let me draw the line a little bit thicker so easier to see. So let's say the price right here, right? The, the, the very low of, the, of this candle. So let me draw right here. Okay, uh, let's make a price for instance, uh, 149, 60 cents. Okay, ideally, again, sometimes you don't want to put too close because the market maker can take you out. Sometimes you just give a bigger stop loss. Now, if you're not sure where to put the stop loss or don't get stop out, then reduce your size, you know, don't go, go, don't go in so big. So you can put like 49.50, 49.40. For me, I personally like put like a dollar or two dollars um, down, just in case you know. Sometimes the stock, have you noticed? Sometimes you trade, the stock goes down to your stop loss, take you out, then bounce back up. That happens, and that's what I'm trying to avoid. So I give myself a little bit of a bigger buffer room, but you don't want to give it too big, and then you know you're 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 risking more than you should be. You risk the reward ratio, stuff like that. Let's see what the time is right now. I think I'm getting too long. 23 minutes. Oh, wow. that has been very long. So I, <laughs> I, this video is longer than I anticipated. Okay. Um, let me see. Anything else I'm missing today? I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. So overall, up 900 bucks ish Didn't hit my goal, $1,000, but it's okay. Because right now, um, the time as we are, as I'm recording this, it's like 9 right now-ish, right? 10 o'clock already. 10 Pacific Standard Time. And the reason why I decided to stop trading is one is already 10 o'clock. I do not like to trade around this time. Secondly, the queue already bounced, right? The queue already bounced. The ideal trade is right here or right here. It's a short right here to go long. Right now, I don't know what the hell is going to do. I don't think it will make a V shape though. I highly doubt that because on the daily, man, we need a pullback somehow. But this 20 EMA right here, the daily 20 EMA is holding up pretty good. 
but eventually it has to break below that and retest the 50. It, can, it can't go up like this for a long time. It's very scary for the overall market. Now we look at the weekly. This is the QQQ, by the way, the overall index for the NASDAQ, kind of. Yeah, it's getting overextended. Um, we need a correction pretty soon. We just don't know when. I mean, I know it's coming pretty soon. It's just a matter of when. You see the monthly chart, right? I mean, look at that. Oh, man, it's scary. Look at the stochastic RSI. Very, very high. The funny thing is the overall market is super high. Meanwhile, Tech 2 Chef is like low right now, right? It's really low. But guess what happened? When the market correction comes, it's going to pull this down with it. So you need to keep that in mind. Not just Tech 2 Chef, all the stocks, including like Wish, because I know Wish just massively tank, right? Let's check the daily. See, creating a lower high. I don't like that already, so no, I'm not buying this candle either. Now, remember the, I talked about Clorox last time, my previous video? Check out Clorox. This is what people want, right? <laughs> Why is that? Like I said, Clorox has very strong fundamentals. When you think of bleach, who do you think? Clorox. They have economic moat. They have brand name, you know? That's what I'm trying to say when I come to investing. When it comes to investing, when you see these major dips right here, and on the daily and the weekly, as long as it hit this key level of support, you can see it right here, right? If you zoom out, this is the time where you want to buy. This is not the time to buy. This is the time to take profit and just wait. If you buy here, you're just chasing based on my experience because it's going up. I like to buy stock, especially solid company on major pullback, especially in the 200 moving average. As I mentioned on my last previous video, how I, how I invest in a company. Okay, this video is getting too long. See you guys in the next video. <laughs> Bye.